In this video, I learned the hard way that tufting is not as easy as it looks. And honestly, it doesn't even look that easy. It, look, it looks hard. So it's even harder than that, especially for an idiot like me who goes in blind. I started recording this video last year uh, and I was a little underprepared. I thought I had enough to jump into tufting. I think I do have enough now, but I think it'll be fun to just start off in the past, in my first endeavor, as a cautionary tale for anyone who thinks they want to give this a go. We are giving tufting a go, which sounds really, it's just the word tufting, just make it sound soft and cute. And then you, then you see this. And this is anything but soft and cute. This is absolutely terrifying. So I have no experience with this as with most of the art mediums I try, but I've seen a lot of TikToks of people tufting. It looks super satisfying and I really want to give it a go. I have no idea how this works. We're going to spend this week finding out and see what we can make. I probably shouldn't just like plug it in and pull the trigger, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh my God. Put the gun down and give me a pack of tropical fruit bubble licious. Thread the yarn through the needle hole. I've turned it off, just so you know. I've turned it off. So am I going over the top? Yes. Okay, so I'm threaded through that, and then that, push the needle into the tufting cloth and hold on. <laughs> what is this for? Oh, it's for a handle. Look at that. There you go, now we're talking. Oh my God. It's cutting little noodles off. These tiny little scissors snip the, uh, the fabric. So you must end up with a little bit of yarn that's been pushed through, folded and cut. So it turns into two. Oh, all right, let's give this a go. This seems fun. Now based on the little bit of Googling that I've done, I know that I need to be doing this on sort of a Hessian material. Now I'm not gonna be able to work on the whole area of the canvas from the outside because I can't needle into the canvas. So it's actually more the window inside the canvas area that will be my working area. And just to make sure that's super clear and I don't end up stabbing wood, I'm just gonna mark that with a marker and then set myself up to work vertically on my table easel. Nope. Close. Uh, that's not correct, but let's see what happens if I... Oh, it unthreaded again! I feel like it started to do something. Right, so that's, hang, that's hanging down. I think this pulled before, so I don't want it to have any sort of tension. Okay, just a note uh, from Jazza in the future here. Watching this part of the video in the editing process has been so painful because obviously by the end of this video, I figured out rug tufting. Coming back and seeing me do this crap for the first time is just so painful to watch. And I wanted to say that because anyone who's watching this who has ever done rug tufting can see all of the painful mistakes I'm already leaping into at first. I'm aware of it and, and feeling all that pain myself having overcome and address these mistakes later in this video. We got something going. I'm just gonna, just gonna try and keep it up with the, ah! How do you do this? How do you, this is chaos. I mean, one step at a time. All right, this is gonna be more work than I initially expected. Look, it may not be amazing, but it is my first creation and we treat our creations equally. Epic reveals. Jokes aside, I have a bit of getting used to to do with this thing, and that's gonna mean going through a bit more canvas. So I reset myself, stretched it a little bit tighter this time, and started practicing just seeing if I can get some consistent runs. It does say tufting must be done from bottom to top. Does it? Yeah. Where? The very last thing, from bottom to top. That was in the instructions, wasn't it? Because it's the end of point 10, I must have just tuned out by then. <laughs> Literally all I've tried is the opposite. Bottom to top, let's go. Yeah! Oh, look at that, they're little loops. That's what it's meant to look like. Wait. 
this isn't the front of the rug, this is the front of the rug. This is doing little loops, and that is the rug bit. It's starting to make sense. I'm an idiot. You're right. It's fact. With that vital piece of information now, we can finally follow a Bob Ross tutorial. So I drew a bit of a landscape picture with the intent to create a Bob Ross themed rug. And of course, as soon as I get stuck into it, the wool keeps unthreading itself. And it must have been based on the weight of the spool and the fact that it wasn't rolling. It just kept applying backwards pressure. So I needed to find a way to have the wool unroll. And I thought, aha, what if the wool was wrapped in one continuous motion, in a clockwise motion around some kind of a, a rod or spool so that it could just simply unroll without having tension. So I used an ingenious improvised rig using a drill attached to some foam on the inside of a kitchen towel roll and spun the wool from the original bundle into a nice continuous circular rod. This I feel is a pretty good invention and the fact that I'm figuring this out, inventing this in my early dabble is a pretty good sign of things to come. I mean I think it would make it easier on so many people who do tufting if someone had already invented something as ingenious as what I've done here. Now with my friction free cylindrical wool dispenser, the patent's pending but it's just a working title at the moment, I was able to nestle myself comfortably in the creation process. With the voice of Bob Ross in my head guiding me harmoniously through my first ever rug creation. Anything that you want you can build. This is your world. This is your world. Here we have it. My first ever, oh, actually the front is that, which does look better than the back, but I think anyone would be happy to throw this on the ground and stamp all over it, which is really what it's for at the end of the day. Okay, obviously this is fucking atrocious, but I have done this without any guidance and I've learned a few things. I mean, hey, part one, part two, you know, the sequel is better than the original. I have a lot of work and research to do though. So now I'm gonna take my lunch break and watch a bunch of different YouTube videos and TikToks and actually see if I can get a handle on how people do this. And then we'll give it another crack. Now to this point in my lunch break after a half day of trying to dabble through rug tufting and not having much success, we're watching other people do it well and actually, you know, taking much closer note of what they're using and how they're doing it. I realized very quickly, I cannot continue this project on that day. Not only had I not researched or prepared myself enough, I also haven't got myself the right materials for the project. Just small tweaks or budget choices that I made that meant that I actually couldn't do this in a successful or high quality way. So it's back to the drawing board to prepare to come back to this in the future. Now that was late last year. Fast forward to March, 2024. So it's been like four or five months since this abomination happened. So now we're gonna get serious. We've put a lot more time and effort into researching, planning, and acquiring the materials we need to do this properly. So this next portion of the video is dedicated to me four or five months ago, and anyone else who wants to jump into this blind as a note to slow down a little bit and pay attention, because this is a craft in which the tools definitely make the biggest difference. Now, in my previous attempt, I was intuitive enough to know that this form of wool packaging wouldn't work and unravel into the tufting gun. So my instinct was in the right direction and I think you can buy pre-round spooled wool. But the system I was so proud of inventing for winding my own spools, well, that exists. It's a, it's a wool winder. You can get electric ones, which are much faster and more reliable, but if you couldn't tell, I've been pretty budget conscious through this whole experience, which is actually probably why I fell into so much trouble in the first place. My first attempt was primarily very budget restricted. So as you can see, I've gone for a manual winder, still being pretty conservative with my budget, but this time, obviously I've tried to get at least the minimum amount of tools and quality that I need to do something decent even if it is a little more fiddly. With that being said, this still cost me over a thousand dollars to get all of the basics on our budget. So let's just say this hobby 
uh, requires a little bit of an upfront investment. Another rookie mistake I made in my previous attempt was to have only one thread of wool run through the gun, which is why some of these pre-built frames make it easier for you, because they actually have stands for two spools and hooks up here that you run them through so that they naturally feed through, lift off of your spools, and thread into the gun without much resistance that'll cause it to pull out. But at the end of the day, this is clearly something that you need to do with some guidance. And I, I'm used to being a little bit spoiled and a little bit cocky and just trying stuff and getting pretty far on my own. But this has definitely humbled me and given me a lot of respect for people who actually know how to do this. But honestly, in stepping back and doing my research and now entering it with a little more wisdom and you know preparation, I'm even more excited because it looks really fun. All right, so now I'm ready for round two, a lot more prepared this time. Also, massive thanks and shout out to Crystal Christie, who made a phenomenal tutorial on YouTube, which is honestly most of what my team and I followed to prepare for the second time around. I feel way more prepared and really appreciate her awesome advice. So I'll link to her video in the description. She has 10K subs and she's really good at this. So go check her out and subscribe if you're interested in this. But if you really want to watch someone inexperienced give a complicated medium a go, well stay tuned. We're about to get started. Now follow the order of steps as recommended by some of those guides that I've been following, which usually says to go with the line work first. So I set myself up with my black wool, get everything sketched in place, do a couple of test lines to make sure things seem to be working and they do. So holding my breath, it's time to get to work. I finished the line work of my mini pencil rug and did another go around the outer edges just to give it a thicker outside border. Then it's on to filling in the main event, the middle areas with the yellow of my pencil color. It seems to be working and touch wood, it seems to be working well. Now we are not out of the woods yet, not only do I have to finish this, but there are plenty of steps to come to take the rug to completion. But let's just say I'm feeling miles more confident than the time I entered cockily and just jumped into it. And I'm certainly enjoying the process a lot more. So I've just done my double and I think it's gone really well. You know, I'm not done yet, but that is a very good start. Now the next step is actually to put glue on it and I've got to leave it to set before I can take it off and then finish off this. And I was gonna just move on to my dive, but I can't take this off. And I've got all this room anyway, so I'm just gonna fill my whole dabble sheet and I think right here, I'm just gonna put a big splat of paint, make a little splat rug. We're gonna end up with three rugs as a result of this project. Pencil, splat, and we'll get to our dive later. Let's make a splat, shall we? So to start off by sketching out the shape of my rug, I wanna fill as much of the remaining canvas as possible, which actually is a decent-ish rug size, sort of like a doormat, which is pretty cool. And I'm gonna make this a nice, big, bright red paint splat. And as you can see, I've sort of sectioned off different areas to divide into different shading. So it's off to prepare my colors so I can just seamlessly go from one to another with two shades of red for the main area of the splat, some orange highlights, and just a little bit of white for the very end highlights. But I start with the finest details first, beginning with the finest white highlights because everything is gonna crowd around those, then onto line work, and then finally filling my rug with color. So far, so good. It gives you an idea as to how far apart the lines are and how you know plush it's gonna be. But really over here, is where the magic starts to happen. It's looking pretty cool. I have to first trim all this down using a hair trimmer and then use this sort of latex adhesive all over the back of these and then step away and hopefully come back tomorrow where we can turn things up a notch or two.
This video is brought to you by my customizer kit. Over $200 worth of incredible art supplies, including three packs of professional paint markers, premium sketchbook, paint brushes, and a huge amount of customizing and customizable materials. But don't worry, it's not $200. In fact, it's just under $100 during Easter. For having a sale, use the code JAZZY15 while you can to get $15 off of the customizer kit. A huge amount of value, and it's an incredible gift for you yourself or a loved one. My customizer kit is both a pack of professional quality tools that will last you for many years and a really fun box of activities loaded to the brim with a huge amount of fun projects and a guidebook to carry you through making anything your own. Check it out at customizerkit.com. It's a huge support to the channel and you or the loved one you're giving it to is going to have a blast. Remember it's only available for a limited time so check it out while you can. Link is in the description. All right, we are back. It's the next day. My rugs are completely dried. So that means in theory, they're ready to remove. Also a quick note to say a huge thank you and welcome to my newest legend patron, King, who is not only a king, but also now a legend. Thank you so much for joining the ranks of my legendary patrons. So I have two doubles, a mini pencil rug and my paint splat. This is sort of like doormat size, which is perfect. Now there's quite a bit to do to finish them off, but rather than do all of the finishing on my doubles before going to my dive, I'm just gonna set those aside. I'm gonna finish them all off together, do my dive now, and I'll just finish off the smaller ones first so I can sort of get a feel and get the practice for it so I don't ruin my big one. But what am I gonna do for my big full rug which will fill the whole of my frame. Well, I asked you guys in the community post poll and 29,000 people voted on the polls, over 10,000 of whom voted for the Jazza Avatar. So, oh sorry, I should say the Jazzatar. So let's do it. We're going old school people. We're doing the Jazzatar. So it's time to stretch out my canvas as taut as I can and put down my guide. So while it did take a little bit of tweaking of the proportions to get it right, eventually I got it to a place I was happy with and just to double check, took a photo with my phone, flipped it to make sure it looks all right in reverse and then launched into tufting. I have to say, there is a reason I keep saying dabble before you dive. I was able to just jump into this pretty ambitious piece, especially for a first timer, with a lot more confidence and some actual experience under my belt. Obviously a very little amount of experience, but enough that I knew how to handle the machine. I knew what order to do things in. I knew generally the sort of width between the lines I needed to aim for. In short, I actually felt like I kind of got the process, at least enough to make my Jazzatar rug. I picked up a few little methods as I went so that by the time I was doing this rug, I was able to mostly avoid pulling the needle felting gun out, which is the thing that leaves all those strands out and also creates a bit more of a risk of the wool coming out. The only battle I really came across was running out of the skin tone wool. I got my team to keep me stocked up, but I ran through a bit more than I expected and you really need to sort of fill this area and it really does chew up a lot more than I think I anticipated. Finally, the tufting was done. It took about two and a half hours to put all of this together. So with a bit of a trim along the back, it's time to add the glue and set it aside until tomorrow. Now that's got a little bit to go to dry, but we have a couple of rugs that I can practice the finalizing process on. I can get all my mistakes and learning out of the way before I do that one. So apparently there are a few steps left. One, trim all the excess, specifically trimming the excess canvas border around the rug. Step two, trim the excess off the top, the actual plush. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. The next step apparently is to trim along every single interconnecting point between colors and lines and stuff. Side note, <clears throat> I think this is the step I'm using the mask for. Basically, I think I'm just trying to create a little bit of a bevel between the color and the line and all the separate sections. So it just looks a little bit neater all around. Okay, that looks pretty done. And it pretty much is the last step is putting on a rug backing, but I'm gonna wait till the end and do all of them together. I mean, that's one out of three. It's my smallest but it worked. The trick is just to do the next one better than that one, and then the last one better than this. It is the 
the next day. I have two finished double rugs aside from the backing, which I'll do in a sec. It's worked really well. This is like, especially considering how this all started. I'm pretty chuffed and ready now to finish off the big one. Oof. Just make sure you have a good pair of scissors because it makes everything easy. Let's look at him. Oh, that looks really good. Ah, that's, that's better than I expected. I was a little nervous about having shading in the hair, but not the skin because there wasn't much color options, but I think that works really well. Okay, so same steps. Heading into the final rug, I was just so much more confident than even the other two, which is really helpful considering that this is the main event. But it's really fun to just in this one video see how far I've come in an entirely new medium where the beginning was very rocky to say the least, and the outcome is turning out to be really satisfying. But I am very excited to show you the satisfying outcome of months of preparation that have gone into making this work. This has been such a wild journey from the tumultuous pain of trying to the hard earned success of victory. It's so satisfying and I have them in front of me. I don't think anything could top this. Well, I just got a notification. Nerdforge uploaded a video. I wonder what she... Oh my God. In all seriousness, it's so wild to me that like in this week, this week, the week I wrapped filming this, Nerdforge made the ultimate giant epic rug. It's insanely cool and shows what can be done with this medium if you really push yourself. And my first thought, aside from being blown away, is that looks really fun. Like you're doing something that big. I could totally get into this. And after actually having some success and seeing something so huge and inspirational, I definitely feel like, well, I mean, we've already invested in the stuff to be able to do it. So I'm pretty keen to do it again. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see if I came back to this in a bigger way. I have so much respect for what Martina and Hansi do over at Nerdforge. So go subscribe while you're there. And if you want to get into rug tufting, honestly, that introductory tutorial video by Crystal Christie, it's a really fun produced video, really cool Aussie creator and really helpful content. Anyways, this has been an adventure and I'm so grateful that you have come on the adventure with me. Huge thank you to my patrons for making this possible. That is it for now. Until next time, I'll see you later.